Now that we're seeing the president hoping to revive this by quarter four, what are we looking at with this conversation? Good morning, Michael. And yes, exactly. You make a very interesting point because what happens when there is a country without a flag carrier is usually the nearest country's airline tends to adopt that role unofficially. And they take advantage of the market there and they end up flying their passengers as if they are their own. Now, with the potential revival of this airline, it means that not only will Uganda be better established in terms of having a flag carrier, but it will be able to compete as a standalone carrier. And that's the important thing here. There is a market. Of course, there is a market. It's 2018, and there is that demand to fly. So it's a safe bet to start an airline, but it isn't going to come without complications. Alex, uh, very interesting there. Now, we did see also uh, the Tanzania, Air Tanzania, there receiving their very first 787 Dreamliner on Sunday, the fifth aircraft that President Magufuli has literally uh, received since 2015. Now, tell me, uh, we're seeing Rwanda Air investing at least 190 billion francs allocated from the budget to expand its operations. We're looking at uh, the Bujasera International Airport also on the back of that money. Air Uganda at the same, Air Tanzania growing, Ethiopian Airlines uh, moving uh, to uh, support Zambian Airlines to uh, come back into business, which liquidated back in 1994. When you look at the, the East African aviation landscape, isn't it worrying that, well, there is so much competition for not so much? Well, what, the theme of kind of East African aviation at the moment is definitely ambition. But, you know, with ambition, while that's certainly great to have high, high hopes for each country's respective airline, you also have to be realistic. And when you look at Air Tanzania's case, they have ordered simply one Boeing 787 Dreamliner. Now, to put it into context, this is an airline that hasn't made money since it started operations. And now it's venturing into the big wide world of long haul with one aircraft. To keep things very simple, just having one aircraft is a logistical nightmare for any airline. If one aircraft has a technical fault en route, let's say it's in China where they plan to send this aircraft, then that airline have to work out how to bring those passengers back because they simply don't have another fly, uh, aircraft that they can fly in to, as a, to operate as a rescue flight. So there are logistical nightmares associated with it, but it's also very unusual. And I, I'm not sure personally that this was the best move for Air Tanzania to operate just one aircraft, to order just one. Apparently, there are rumors that they could have ordered another Dreamliner, and they are in what's known as the undisclosed customer orders list for Boeing. But as it remains undisclosed, we can't know. They are very ambitious. They have plans, but ultimately they will be competing with the heavyweights. They'll be competing with Turkish Airlines, with Qatar Airways, and they'll be entering long-haul markets that they have never served and that they have no experience serving. So it's a gamble. And, uh, and while they're ambitious, which is great, they also have to be realistic. And so this is really one to watch as to how they roll out and implement the entry into service for this standalone long-haul jet. I can only hope they're on the right side of that gamble, Alex. But now, you did mention something very interesting there, that uh, they haven't made any profits. Now, allow me to bring this back to, 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 to a, uh, an interesting conversation again. Other than Ethiopian Airlines, we haven't really seen any of these uh, local or uh, maybe national carriers in the east of the continent making any sort of a profit. Now, I'm talking of uh, Kenya Airways, Rwanda Air, Air Tanzania, Air Uganda, all of them. None has released, uh, you know, financial results that do indicate that, well, they're making profits. No. And they are moving into different markets. Now, we did see last year you are the very first person that broke the news for Rwanda Air applying to fly to JFK in New York. Now, this is expected uh, to kick off, and it will be uh, first, the first time that Rwanda Air flies into the United States of America. From your experience, do you think this is, uh, you know, going to increase uh, revenues for the country or maybe... Is Rwanda Air or even Kenya Airways going to be investing more than they will be receiving in return? U.S. are both very important markets, especially for Kenya and for Rwanda. And it's not just simply, you know, for the United Nations personnel who are coming backwards and forwards, but there is a definite market there. And just recently, U.S. visitors took over the place of U.K. visitors to Kenya. So that's their inspiration. 
But what both airlines are definitely doing is looking at, as you said, the market leader for Africa, Ethiopian Airlines. They're seeing, well, Ethiopian Airlines entered the States, so now they already fly to three gateways in North America, and they're profitable. They're ordering more aircraft, they're carrying many passengers, and year on year they improve. So, of course, they're looking to them, they're trying to replicate their growth, but again, it will not come without complications. Rwandair hoped to operate the A330neo, which they have acquired uh, slots from here from Airbus that were originally intended to go to now bankrupt Air Berlin. So with these aircraft, they're hoping to fly non-stop to JFK. But Kigali is hot and it's high. And the aircraft is close to maximum range operating from Rwanda to New York. So it's not going to come without complications. And the Rwanda teams are working with uh, delegates here at Airbus to implement how they can use this aircraft to maximize revenue and profitability, because ultimately African airlines are known for anything. It is sadly their struggle to make profit. So they can learn a lot from Ethiopian airlines, but luckily they do have the assistance of working with world-renowned carriers like Airbus, like Boeing, who are trying to hope and ensure that they do prosper with these new routes. All right, Alex, now we do know that uh, Kenya Airways has a deal with uh, Delta Airlines that uh, people sponsored by the United States government will be able to fly Kenya Airways into Africa or into Kenya. Now, for Rwanda Air, which is flying uh, at least thrice a week to Gatwick, uh, moving into the U.S. Uh, market could be quite, uh, you know, a bigger, a bigger step for them. But then how do you think they should uh, leverage that and make revenue on the back of it? How many times should they fly to, 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 to JFK and uh, the kind of pricings? Because, I mean, we haven't had any conversation on a, a certain deal or accord with any of these big airlines in the market already. So what way should they go about it? Some sort of recommendations. Some kind of interline or uh, agreement Rwanda and another airline purely to give the airline more visibility. Mm. While Rwanda is very well known in Africa, it's not so well known in the US. So it's that you know initial worry of how do they ensure that those first flights are full. And ultimately, Kenya Airways, we know that the first few flights that they have planned to the States, they are still pretty low in terms of load factor. There hasn't been a huge take up. Now, this is normal because the pattern hasn't started yet. The word hasn't got out. People aren't simply aware that they will be flying there. But the main thing and the main focus to ensure that profitability and to ensure revenue and kind of a safer financials is to get it right with the aircraft, the time of day, the implementation, and to ensure that they aren't hampered with things like weather and, and the humidity of Kigali, the altitude and, uh, and the complications that will present flying an aircraft that is close to maximum range to New York. If they get everything right in the planning stage, then that sets themselves up for the easy part, which is telling the US, look, we're here, we're flying to Rwanda. There is definitely a market, even for tourism. And so it can be a success. It's just that.